Peace, everyone. Unmask Art here, and welcome back to part two of the uh, Gray Wolf in Pastel tutorial. Today we're going to be finishing our project, and uh, I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, I am going to be using the Carbothello pencils, um, and if you missed part one, I have the link for part one in the video description. I also have a link to the reference photo in the Easy Trace line art and all of those tools and materials that I'm using. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm gonna start here on the eye and I'm only gonna be using the pencils today. We're gonna be finishing up the details of the fur, getting our wolf looking nice and uh, realistic. And then I'll show you a little trick on adding some snowflakes and then everyone's favorite part, peeling off the tape. Uh, at the end. So uh, hello Gina, Barbara, Pumpkin Spice, Lindy, Sneaks Richmond, uh, uh, Lily, Steve, Co. Good to see everyone here. So I'm going to be starting with 635 color and I'm just going to add in some of the specks of brown that break up this kind of uh, salt and pepper fur around the eye. This, this process uh, can be rather time consuming, so I recommend if you're, if you're working on this project to take your time. Uh, there's no need to rush and just uh, have fun with it. I, like, I always like to start around the eye because I feel like that's, that's usually the focal point of any animal portrait or human portrait for that matter. So. Oh, hello, Kurt and Wendy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Thank you guys for coming by the live stream. So this will be the final part of our woof project here. And next week, next week for the pastel tutorial, I'm going to be doing a lovely winter landscape with some snow. I'll show you guys how to to create some snow and uh, yeah that's uh, that's gonna be next week's tutorial so make sure you subscribe and stick around for that uh, and if you're not already a family member in the unmask family Facebook group I have the link for that in the video description as well uh, when you're doing these these details these small details here you don't have to try to do it all in one in one pass of the of the color we're gonna be jumping around between colors I have six colors here and I most likely won't be using any other colors than these six uh, if you establish a really nice base layer with um, the soft pastels that we did last week then you won't really need all that many colors with the pencils but there's a lot of there's a lot of room for creativity when it comes to this part of the painting process because you can incorporate all kinds of fun colors into your woof's fur uh, to just create unique senses of lighting and individuality in your woof. You know, you can incorporate some brighter oranges or maybe some yellows. Uh, you could even go more blue with the grays. Uh, you have all kinds of different uh, directions you could take your woof here. Uh, the important part of this stage of the drawing is to make sure that you are brushing all of your little fur lines with the pencils in the direction that the fur is actually growing so make sure you're paying really really close attention to your reference photo so that you get that fur looking natural and I like to start with my darker colors first before moving on to my lighter colors uh, just because uh, if you if you don't have the dark parts filled in enough then 
the fur always looks lighter than it's supposed to. Whereas, you know, adding the highlights later on is, is a little bit easier to gauge and to map out. Uh, will I be streaming Christmas week? Yes, I will be. I will maintain my stream schedule exactly as it is. Oh, hello, Lisa. And Chris, Christine. Paulo. Good to, good to see you. Thank you for coming by today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I know these, uh, these, this final detail process is a little finicky and it, it can feel a little overwhelming a lot of times uh, if you don't have much experience with this stage of the drawing process. And it might appear as though I'm, I'm doing things semi-randomly. Uh, right now, I haven't used any other color. I've only used this one color. And uh, I'm just, like I said, I'm mapping out all those darker areas of the fur around the eye. And I'm just kind of working my way out in sort of a, a spiral pattern, I guess. Um, doesn't really matter uh, how you work your way around the eye, but... Just uh, just slowly add the color in and get the detail showing up and eventually the eye will really start to come to life. You can already start to see some of the texture showing through. That's, that's what we're building up now. Last week we weren't concerned about the texture of the fur. We were just, we were worried more about capturing uh, the base colors of the particular area of the fur. And we got the wolf looking rather good last week. But this week, this week we want to make our wolf look as realistic as possible. I'm going to try to get my wolf looking um, as realistic as I can in a about an hour and a half. I, th I think that's going to be a, a, my goal here. Uh, I could probably spend, I don't know, easily three more hours, you know, finessing the details and just polishing the uh, image overall and just getting everything to look exactly the way that I want it. But for the sake of the tutorial and the live stream today, I'll just try to get it, you know, looking really nice. Some place where I think uh, most beginners should be able to get their woof if they follow the tutorial closely. All right, I'm going to jump to a lighter color. Uh, this is a light gray. This is 700. And I'm just going to pull out a little bit of highlights. I'm not doing white just yet. This is just going to be a very subtle lighter color than some of the uh, browns that I have here. You'll notice that uh, when you're using these pastel pencils. You don't have to go to an extreme color. Even even the subtle colors make a, make a big difference. And you want to start slowly with your contrast between the highlights and the shadows and stuff. That way you don't overdo it. Subtlety will be a very important property to making your woof look realistic. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to start working on the snout here. I'm going to switch back to my brown, that 635 color. A lot of the fur on the snout can almost be seen as just dots. There's a lot of little, little teeny tiny hairs up here by the nose. 
and I'm just going to work those colors in dots basically. I'm just going to build up the value as I see it in the reference photo. As the hairs get further and further away from the nose, they, they tend to uh, slowly get longer and longer. So as you move away from the nose, you'll start want to skip the dots and go more towards the, the short lines there. And if you make the if you make the snout too dark, that's okay because you'll have the lighter colors to come over top of it and readjust those uh, those subtle values in the in the fur there because there's a lot of areas where we we intentionally made it a bit darker than it should be uh, just for the sake of letting those highlights show up. Another thing is where the uh, the wolf's whiskers start to come out you'll see these little these darker dots you can start mapping out where those those uh, darker dots are where the whiskers start to pop out and just uh, put those in really quick kind of as a uh, landmark reference for for your other colors and other hairs and whatnot come down here to the mouth Uh, what inspired me to do two streams on YouTube lately? Uh, I, I don't... It's It's been some time. Uh, I've been doing the... Uh, I've been doing the drawing journals on Mondays and the pastel tutorials on Tuesdays for several weeks um, uh, right after Inktober. So it, um, I would say what inspired me is... Probably the fact that people want want these types of videos. I really enjoy doing the pastel tutorials, and um, I found that uh, my audience prefers the live streams a, a bit more than the pre-recorded tutorials, and uh, I do too. It saves me a lot of editing. And so I just stuck with it. If you use one color too much, uh, things will start to look a little two-dimensional, a bit flatter. Um, so try to uh, not overdo the single color. But with, with pastels, you have tons and tons of room for uh, adjustments and bringing in some of the other colors and the lighter colors and all of that so you don't have to uh, worry too much about it just make note of it that you don't want to be too monochromatic with a single color good morning Virginia good to see you If I happen to miss anybody's questions, uh, don't hesitate to, to re-ask them. Sometimes it's hard for me to keep up with the chat. But I always want to do my best to answer your guys' questions, so keep them coming. Alright, I'm going to go back to the light gray now. And I'm going to pull off 
uh, there's a few hairs coming off the the front of the face so I'm gonna be working into the background just a little bit a few flyaway hairs again making notice of the direction that the fur is growing is very very important here come up here on the snout a little bit bring in some of these lighter grays this highlight right here right behind the nose there's a little highlight here so just use some gray for that <clears throat> same thing up here on the edge of the nose where the fur starts to get a bit longer just very very short hairs coming off into the background there you don't want that as, as nice as that clean line looks sometimes you have to break that clean line up uh, where we use the masking film that way the fur looks natural and fluffy it just doesn't stop flat like that so gotta add those those little flyaway hairs same thing down here off the uh, bottom jaw a bit behind so the comment is uh, did I miss something did I miss a, uh, did I miss your question um, pastels and charcoal are very difficult for me to master uh, I don't know if I would compare uh, charcoals to pastels as much but like any medium it just takes a bit of time a bit of practice it's, it's experience that I think is um, the, the thing that you just can't skip. You know, when it comes to being good at a medium, experience is probably the most important teacher. Knowing how the colors will interact with one another uh, significantly influences your color choices. For instance, coloring this wolf here, you know, the pencils that I chose I chose based on experience on getting the uh, the right balance of both color and value. gray now um, this color here is the 706 uh, I'll just go ahead and list off all the colors that I'm going to be using today so if, if you want to grab them you can uh, so I have black and white those are those are non color colors I'm using uh, then I'm using the 700 gray I'm using the 635 brown uh, then I'm using this brown orange 685 and then the seven the 706 gray uh, those are the six colors I'm going to try to um, finish this woof with 
uh, just using these six colors. If I need a seventh color, it will most likely be like just a toning color, maybe a, a light bluish or possibly um, a light tan for some of the light tan parts of the fur, depending. Maybe a more reddish brown. It, it just all depends. See how these colors work out. Sometimes, sometimes I need to, to readjust some things with a different color. black now. The other thing aside from making sure you're following the direction of the fur is also the the length of the lines that you create. It's very important to uh, adjust your line length based on the, the length of the fur. I'm going to wait to put in the whiskers until I'm confident that I have the fur looking exactly the way that I want. Might even do a tiny bit of soft blending. Sometimes sometimes you can overwork your lines and you get uh, you get the fur just looking a little bit too artificial and a way to balance that out is to just do a, a slight soft blending with the soft tool the same tool that we used last week to do the blending with that uh, the blending knife here i like to use that to do kind of a, a last touch of, of blend before adding in things like the whiskers and those final final bits of lines So I just take the soft tool and barely touching the paper, just gently pushing those those lines into the paper so that they they lose like this scent, this subtle roughness to them because when you draw on the paper the pencil doesn't lay perfectly smooth. It has kind of a slight graininess to it, and you can get rid of that graininess just by grazing it very, very lightly with the blending sponge. Also around the eye, I'll just tap those lines. There we go. Uh, I'm going to grab the white now and do a bit of highlighting. Get the bright bits of the fur showing through, especially up here on the snout. Uh, there's quite a bit of a highlight running down where the, the light is hitting, kind of reflecting off this part of the nose. Uh, 
uh, do you only use Carbothello pastel pencils? Uh, yes, as of now, I only use the Carbothello pencils. However, I do have a a set, a small set of the um, Faber-Castell Pit pencils. Uh, the, what I've used of the Pit pencils, I wasn't much of a fan, but that was er, that was long, long time ago. Um, I actually just ordered the full set of the Pit pencils along with the full set of the uh, Karen Dash uh, pastel pencils and the Derwent pastel pencils. So I'm going to have all the uh, major sets of the pastel pencils coming in very soon and I'll be doing a review of all of them so that you guys don't have to go out and spend all the money that I did to buy them all. And you can just get what uh, what you think will work best for you. Uh, I think if, if you don't want to wait for that, uh, the Carbothello pencils are, are certainly, certainly worth the purchase. Um, in, in my eyes, I would, uh, I would recommend these pencils to anybody at any time. They are, they've been very, very good. All right, there we go. A few highlighted parts of the fur. And the face is, face is starting to come along. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And we'll start doing, I don't know, maybe, maybe the forehead. I'll do the forehead up here a little bit. Uh, I am using pastel matte paper. Uh, looks like there may be a flaw to the paper. Tiny white speck shows up. Um, I'm gonna I'm going to assume that's my camera because there's definitely not a white speck anywhere that I see but appreciate you uh, pointing out the potential white speck I don't I do not see a white speck anywhere so I think it, it's probably just my camera picking something up um, what was I gonna say oh yes uh, I'm gonna start working on the forehead up here a little bit and I'm going to start with that light gray, that is the 700. Actually, that's not quite as light as I'd want it, so I'm actually going to start with the white instead. Because there's this little eyebrow piece, like, right in here on the woof. That kind of comes up right in front of the eyebrow. And it's really light, so I'm just going to pencil that in. And then it kind of runs up the forehead, up towards the ear a little bit. So to get that lighter, I'm going to use the white. And then, of course, the edge over here, the fur comes up past the line from the background. So add that texture there. That will help make the wolf's forehead look a little bit more natural. Don't be afraid to go into your into your your background there. It's important. A few uh, eyebrow bits coming off a little bit farther there. And then I'm going to use the black. That middle part there. right in between the light spots. It's like this black line that runs up the middle of the forehead all the way up, all the way up past the top of the head. There we go. Now I'll do uh, over top slash behind the eye, kind of this area here. If you break up you break up your drawings into sections like this they they tend to be a bit more digestible a little less overwhelming uh, I'm using the uh, medium gray that 706 color
and use this color to kind of map out the direction that all this fur is going because it kind of it goes up this way and then it starts to curl back and then it's all going down this way by the time it gets over here kind of wraps itself around the eye and then it changes direction up here so it's it's doing all kinds of stuff bit of light white fur kind of coming up over here so I'll just uh, put in that white fur really quick And then it has this nice salt and pepper texture uh, all through this area. And the way to create that salt and pepper texture really easily is when you're, when you're drawing your lines, instead of doing them in straight paths, for instance, instead of doing it just drawing lines straight like this, what I, want, what I will do instead is I'll do like V shapes and I usually refer to this as creating little mountain ranges. So I'll do one example here. So I'll just draw these little lines and I'll just do them in a kind of zigzaggy pattern. And then what I'll do is I'll just do another one right next to it. And you can overlap these lines as much as you need to, but as long as you do a zigzag pattern, you'll get that salt and pepper texture with your fur. So I'm using black right now. Uh, you still have to maintain the direction of the fur. That's still an important part of the process. So not only do you have to do the zigzag pattern, but you have to also maintain the correct direction for the fur plus the length. The, the, uh, the length of the lines has to coordinate with the length of the fur here. So you can see how that the zigzag pattern had already started to create somewhat of that salt and pepper look for the fur. That's how you create it. It's uh, rather, well, it's it's rather simple to, to create that, that kind of texture of the fur. So you don't have to overthink it too much. The hard part is just maintaining the direction that you need plus the length. That's that's the tricky part. That is a that is a good uh, uh, that is that is a good concept to uh, to remember, Christine. That uh, w you know when you're when you're following a reference photo and you get caught up, you know, trying to replicate the the referen the reference photo perfectly. Uh, it's really not worth the the energy it requires from from you because you're the only one looking at the reference photo. As long as you get the the pattern type correct you know anybody that looks at the the drawing will be convinced that it that it looks the way it's supposed to I'll do a little bit of highlighting on that salt and pepper fur there just a little bit Let's go over to this ear now. So this ear up here. 
and I'm going to start with my light gray, that uh, 700 color. I'm just going to come right off the ear here, create those, those lines that need to go over top the background. I just want to make sure that I have the uh, the white of the paper covered up completely. Uh, then I have some hairs coming off the back here. A little bit of the lighter fur showing up. It doesn't take a lot of effort when you have a good when you good when you have a good base layer of colors that we did last week. It, it shouldn't take too much of the pencil work and the more the more you get done with your base layer colors the easier it is with the pencil work here uh, now I'm gonna take the uh, the middle gray the 706 just add a bit darker gray here not too much of it doesn't really show up all that much And eh, I'll do this edge down here. And do some of the hairs coming off the ear. Uh, I'm going to use white though. Use white for that back part of the ear. I'm okay with some of the white showing here because we're going to add snow on top of our woof, just like the reference photo has. There we go. And a little bit of black. Some of those dark, dark hairs. There we go. Let's just uh, do the other ear now. So again, with the uh, light gray, I'm gonna come in here and start in the middle of the ear. This uh, part of the ear has, you know, it's a bit lighter. I'm gonna just grab white because our base layer is rather dark there. So I'm gonna use white instead. And here, I'm actually just going to kind of crisscross the hairs uh, because the, the hair inside the ear is what you would consider fuzzy uh, and basically it's all the hairs like coming straight towards the viewers eye and they're all crisscrossed and they just look like a big old cotton ball and so to, to create that look you you take no direction with the hairs you just crisscross them and that will create that that fluffy or semi fluffy looking pattern you can just do a bunch of little uh, X stars type thing, and you'll get that that fluffy look. Don't don't overdo it though. Um, you'll just end up coloring the whole part of the ear in uh, one solid color. Just do it do it rather loosely, and you'll you'll get the result that you want. There we go. Um, I'm going to grab my brown now, that uh, 635 color. Do a bit of brown where I have these black, these black spots. I'm going to fill in with a little bit of brown so that they don't look so flat. Adding a, a little bit of brown in there will give them more depth, a little bit more variety. 
the hair here on the ear is rather all over the place. It's a little wet. It's a little wet, so you get kind of a stringy look with the fur. Uh, but it's not all that. It's not all that complex. Just kind of fill in. Uh, pay attention to the direction, and you'll you'll your ear will look fine. This ear is really really. Um, furry looking and so the hairs are just kind of going everywhere and you have a lot of room for a lot of room for error here because it doesn't have to look perfect because the hair is just uh, you know it's just going all over the place so you don't have to like try too hard Oh, thank you, Brenda. Glad you like the way the, the woof is coming together. All right, I'm going to use a bit of our orange brown, which is the uh, 685 color. Uh, you know, I'm going to do a little bit on that this ear here. Just a little bit of orange. <clears throat> Zoom out just a touch so you guys can see where I'm working on this ear. And I'm just going to add a little bit more of this, this orange color in here uh, because adding the grays and the blacks and the browns over top of it will dull it quite a bit. <clears throat> and I'll use this color over top of the, the background, so some of those flyaway hairs. <coughs> Coming off the back of the ear. Scribble those in. Now I'm going to go back to the dark brown, the 635, and there's some, uh, like I said, the, the hairs here are a little wet, most likely from the snow melting on top of the wolf's head. And when you get wet hairs, they, they clump together in, in larger bits, and they, they start to look more stringy. So you can just kind of draw in a few of those stringy looking hairs here with the dark brown and that will give it a bit more of a clumped together wet hair look. Then we have another soft part, really really soft for right here behind the ear. Uh, this is the 700 light gray. Uh, the way to get that soft look is to just get your colors right. So something like this. And you use the soft tool to just make those, those lines really soft and almost completely invisible. And that will give you that, the softer fur. Because what makes that fur look softer in comparison to all the other fur is that it doesn't have the visible texture. It kind of looks like it's been blurred out. And so that we are literally just blurring it out. All right, I'm going to use a light gray on the back of the ear here, uh, pushing out some more fur into the background so that we don't have that sharp edge there anymore and it looks more natural. There we go. Just like that. Uh, I would really love to see this with the three, four hour finishing on it to see what you consider done. Um, <laughs> uh, 
that's that's an idea sneaks that's certainly an idea um okay christine you take care thank you for coming by um uh, what i would consider done yeah that i i i might be stretching it to say three or four hours uh, but maybe at least to two more you know maybe maybe like a maximum of two extra hours for for this painting um because you know there's just a lot of things that you can subtly adjust throughout the throughout the painting and um i like I like that stage. I, my favorite stage of artwork is when I get it to a point that it already looks really good to everybody else, and I can just sit there and, and I'll just look at it and be like, I'll just like one, oh no, I want one more hair here, and I just do that, and I just sit there and, you know, play around with it for, for several hours. That's my favorite stage because it's, it's already looking uh, like I, like I want it to be done, but there's just the certain things in there that I like to um, to add that additional uh, that additional effort to to really just make it extra special and and feel more complete. I'm quite satisfied with the way that the face came out here. Uh, I think that uh, the details really pulled the wolf like out of the paper and uh, made it look more alive, especially the eye here. Um, I feel like I could go a little bit darker, a little bit broader with my black around the eye now that I'm looking at it. This is this is the what exactly what I'm talking about. Like this is the, the stage like for the eye here where I'd come in here and maybe just touch up the black and you can already see the eye sets in a little bit deeper into the paper and the eye just glows a bit more those are the those are the things that i really like to touch up and just re readjust and and change a bit all right moving down to this area here uh, i was using the light gray the 700 color and I'm, uh, the fur is starting to get a little bit longer when i'm doing these longer bits of the fur in order to keep the pencil as sharp as possible so that I'm always getting nice clean lines uh, if you keep it flatter to the paper which an overhanded grip like this makes this process you know a tiny bit easier uh, in my opinion uh, and it's very comfortable to draw like this for me I, I love I love the overhanded grip but uh, you, you also just constantly rotate the pencil with like every pencil stroke so that every time you're using it, you're actually sharpening it as well. And uh, I've, I've mentioned that before many, many times in my tutorials that I'm, I'm constantly rotating my pencil and it's a, really, it's a really good habit to get yourself into. And it saves you... Uh, probably at this point in my life uh, probably years of, sh of sharpening pencils uh, just by getting into the healthy habit of, of rotating them If you guys have any other questions, um, please just uh, keep them coming. Happy, happy to get to them. Uh, the fur. Now uh, we have kind of two different styles of fur going on here. On the back part over here, we have a little bit more of that salt and pepper look. So we're going to use the same method that we did here, except. The, the big difference is that this salt and pepper is much larger. So um, 
you, your your fur is the the lines that we're drawing are much larger, and so our mountain ranges have to adjust uh, in scale as well. So I'm going to focus instead on this part uh, here before getting to the uh, the back there. The fur is also quite a bit softer in this area uh, than it is down here. It's a little bit more coarse down here, and you can see each uh, each individual hair, uh, presumably because this part is still dry, and um, maybe a little shorter than all the fur, or maybe not as thick. Usually that really, really thick fur uh, tends to be a bit softer. There's like less space for it, so it all bunches up and just kind of goes everywhere, and it makes the makes the wolf look extra fluffy. And that uh, that extra fluffiness, like we did here behind the ear, is really just about blending it out and softening it. That's what that's how you get that softer looking fur. Is you just you you have less visible individual lines of hair showing through. Uh, I did not work on the woof before I started streaming today. Uh, everything that you saw me do last week during the live stream, I did nothing. I did nothing other than that. So what I what I did last week um, was put in the background and just put in the base layers of the woof, um, and then. What you've seen me do up to this point is all I've done to the woof. So I believe I streamed for about an hour and a half last week, somewhere around an hour and a half. Um, and so far today, uh, I've been streaming for 50 minutes, so uh, a little less, um, probably less than three hours, I imagine, I'll have invested in this woof to crew to. Um, create the, the best looking wolf that I can. That's that's the uh, benefit of pastels. Uh, I can't uh, can't say much more than that. I mean, pastels are are quick. And they let they let me do things this quick. Cuz I wouldn't even be done filling in the background, I think, if I was working with colored pencils. I'm going to switch to white and uh, do some of the flyaways on the chest here. It's actually proving to be rather difficult to get clean lines. I don't want that I don't want that edge showing too much. So taking a little bit more effort to hide that that edge from the masking film. There we go. I think that's I think that's good. All right, 
right, I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, 700 gray on the back of the wolf. So up here. Got to hide that line. The line will be hidden a little bit more up here on the top uh, once I add the snow as well. Speaking of snow, uh, today we got our first snow here in Poland. Well, at least, you know, here where I live in Poland. Um, I woke up and there looked to be, I don't know, somewhere around two or three centimeters worth of snow on the ground. Uh, and it was snowing pretty much all day. It was very, it was very pleasant to wake up to. I've been, I've been waiting for, for some snow. I was a bit disappointed when I first moved to Poland and I learned that we don't get too much snow here in Katowice, which kind of shocked me. I'm used to, I'm used to seeing snow every year and I just don't feel like I get enough. I could, I could, I could use some more snow, so. It was a pleasant surprise to wake up to. I'm using the white pencil now, by the way. I switched without saying anything. Alrighty then, I am going to use black now, and I'm going to do that salt and pepper, that salt and pepper pattern here on the back, right in this area, and essentially I'm going to create a little mountain range zigzagging back and forth so I'm maintaining the direction and the pencil length that I need but I'm doing zigzags as I do it. This the salt and pepper look here is uh, a lot less subtle because it's it's like being zoomed in almost. So you don't see it as clear, but it is salt and peppery. Fortunately, when you have these larger areas like this, uh, you can go in there and and adjust uh, a little bit easier with your lighter colors as well as your darker colors so there's a lot of leeway here I'm going to use the black to break up some of these lighter areas so that they don't look so flat. I'm still going to do a little bit of blending here and there also to uh, soften the fur and then to add some more texture on top. But overall, I think the wolf is coming out quite well. Uh, I'm going to, uh, actually, let me add just a bit of brown. Yeah, I want to add a, a tiny bit of the brown, the 635, before I do any blending. Thank you. 
I'm actually surprised it's only taken an hour to get to this point. I'm glad you guys like uh, like the way that the wolf is coming out. If you enjoyed the tutorial, be sure to uh, to give the live stream a thumbs up so that I know how many of you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, next week for the pastel tutorial, I'll be doing a winter landscape. Uh, but uh, other than that, I don't have any any other project planned out for the the pastel tutorial so if you want to throw some suggestions at me we can have a conversation about what project what projects you would like to see in the uh, the year to come 2018 is almost behind us time to think about the uh, projects of 2019 already almost there can't believe it can't believe 2018 is is already gone a waterfall you guys you guys in waterfalls you torture me <laughs> every time I ask for a suggestion there's always a waterfall <laughs> maybe I'll throw in a waterfall it's been a while since I've done a waterfall, so maybe, maybe I'll throw in a waterfall for you guys. All right, I'm gonna do some soft blending now. Uh, now for this blending, I am, I can't emphasize how lightly I am touching the paper. It's literally the weight of the blending brush and this is just gonna give me that softer that softer fur that kind of runs in right right in this area just brushing it down you almost can't see the difference but it's subtle. I'm not trying to blend the colors. I'm just trying to get rid of the uh, grainy look of the uh, pencil itself. I uh, like to learn how to draw a white horse. Interesting. Maybe I'll just throw a, a horn on it for the sake of making it a unicorn. <laughs> um, Would love to see a uh, rough collie, a halflinger horse, or white dapple horse. I don't know what any of those look like. I know what a collie looks like, uh, but I don't know the the horses. So I have to look those up. But I do like the idea of doing a, a horse with pastels. That's that's a good subject. I've always I've I've only ever drawn one horse in my life. No, I mean a uh, colored one. I've, I've drawn one other um, with colored pencils, and I actually did that not too, not too long ago. Uh, so doing one in pastels would would be a rather fun. All right, going back with the brown. Just deepening the fur here. Now I'm less focused about the texture 
and a bit more focused on the values and the color. Everything is laid out pretty, pretty clearly at this point. So it's rather easy to see where I need to just make those subtle color adjustments. And th it's at this stage where you might want to consider pulling in one or two extra colors depending on how your woof looks. I added quite a bit of extra orange to my fur on the base layers, um, which will require less addition of the orange uh, with the pencils. So if you didn't, you might, you might reach for the, the orange color a bit more often than I have so far this video. Kind of focused mainly on this brown, a little bit of the black and the white there. I'm going to smooth out the uh, hair underneath the chin and then around the chest. Make that fur look nice and soft. grab the white and do uh, do some highlighting here now I don't, I don't want to overdo the white because if you add too much it will uh, significantly change the color of the fur so I'm just finding a few select areas uh, to lighten up a little bit especially in this salt and pepper hair back here. Some of those flatter areas where it's a bit too dark. Just add a few pencil strokes of the white. Reinforce that that salt and pepper hair back here. A white Pegasus. Oh, that would be cool too. Horse with wings. What would be a unicorn with wings? What would you name that? few whiskers coming off the face. Those are always important. Uh, add a few whiskers with the, the black as well. I'll try not to overdo this. I'll try not to spend too much time because this is, this is the exact stage that I'm talking about. This is what I love. I could just, I could sit here and do this all day long. This is my favorite part because I already love the way the wolf looks, right? And I could just spend the next four hours sitting here, uh, you know, putting in a couple hairs looking at my reference photo, putting in a couple more hairs, just going back and forth, back and forth. All right, 
right, I'm gonna soften some of these hairs here just a little bit. Just to feather them out tiny, tiny bit. Uh, I'm gonna grab the black and do a couple black whiskers here. Uh, do a couple black eyebrow hairs. You know, dogs have those. Those long eyebrow hairs. Gotta throw in a couple of those. Let's do some... Let's do some final black hairs coming down through the fur as well. There we go. All right, now we're on to the snow and I am not prepared. I forgot I needed my uh, soft pastels for this. I didn't have them ready. So let's see here. grab my white pastel and my craft knife and I'm just gonna take this and I want to try to get large chunks and then I'll do the the bits of the snow that stick on top of the woof. That's as easy as just getting closer to the paper. And don't forget about some of the snow on the fur. Uh, maybe a little bit right there. A little bit on the forehead, I think. And that's how I'm going to do the snow. Uh, once you have that, you just take a piece of glassine paper. Take a glassine paper, lay it down. You just you don't have to press real hard. Just gently rub the snow into the paper. You don't like I said. You don't have to press hard. Just the weight of your hand is more than enough. Just like that. And then if you want a few, you know, maybe larger snowflakes come in here and draw in a few larger snowflakes. You really can't tell the difference between stars and snowflakes, so um, it doesn't really matter. There we go. Now it is time. It is time for everybody's favorite part, and that is to peel off the tape. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So now I'm gonna peel off the tape and reveal the nice clean border. And this pastel project will officially be complete.
And there you have it. I must say, I really, really like the way this one came out. This is maybe one of my favorite pastel paintings that I've ever done. It, it came out nicer than I anticipated, and I really like it. So I hope that you guys like it as well. Um, anyways, that is going to be it for today's tutorial. That that completes our wolf, uh, our gray wolf pastel painting. I hope that you guys learned a lot through this process, um, and I hope that you enjoyed the tutorials. Like I said, part one I have linked in the description if you happen to miss it. And uh, yeah, that is going to be it. I will see all of my patrons this Thursday. We're going we're gonna to finish up the drawing of the dog that we've been working on the past few weeks. And then on Monday, I'll have the drawing journal. And then next Tuesday, I am going to do a pastel landscape, a snowy landscape for, you know, this season. And uh, that will be it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Take care. Peace.